Greetings everyone, this is Raul speaking. Welcome to the first video in a series of neuroscience techniques videos developed by Emmanuel and myself for our course, The Neurobiology of Somatosensation. The goal of these videos is to quickly get students up to speed with commonly used research techniques. In this video, I will be giving a brief introduction into patch clamp electrophysiology and I will cover one example to help students familiarize themselves with electrophysiology data and its applications. So what is patch clamp? Patch clamp is an experimental neuroscience research technique used for studying the electrical signals of neurons or any electrically excitable tissue. The most frequently studied signals are voltage, the electrical potential of a cell or membrane, or current, which is generated by ions flowing across the membrane through ion channels. These are acquired through the current clamp and voltage clamp methods. Additionally, many inferences can be made about the properties of a neuron using these readouts. To understand how a neuroscientist acquires these signals, let's briefly talk about how patch clamp is performed. It all starts with a tiny glass pipette, pictured here on the left. The scale of this image is in microns. It is really small. The electrophysiology recordings are carried out by taking this pipette called the recording electrode and mounting it under a microscope and above a sample of interest. This could be a slice of brain tissue, cultured neurons, and various other preparations. The recording electrode is connected to a tower of sophisticated electrophysiological equipment dedicated to recording electrical signals. The electrode is visualized on a monitor via a camera that is attached to the microscope. You can see it here in this image behind the eyepieces of the microscope. Movement of the recording electrode is accomplished via micro manipulators that allow for fine, precise movements. The recording electrode is filled with an ionic solution that mimics the concentration of ions inside of a neuron. This relationship is illustrated here by this dark gray color. The solution inside the recording electrode is referred to by an electrophysiologist as internal. The electrode is submerged in the recording chamber, also known as the bath. The bath is also an ionic solution and the concentration of ions usually mimics a relevant extracellular media. You can also change the composition of ions or add pharmacological reagents in the internal or the bath to test different ideas. Using the micro manipulators, the recording electrode is pushed up against the cell membrane. At this point, the image displayed by the rig camera would be something like this. Now, the electrophysiologist can choose to enter one of various patch clamp configurations. The first configuration depicted here is known as cell attached mode, and it is achieved when the pipette is pressed up against the cell membrane and suction is applied to form a tight seal. This technique allows the investigator to measure currents across a single channel or multiple channels, and it also allows for the measurement of action potential firing without opening the cell and disrupting its internal composition. The next configuration illustrated on the bottom left is known as whole cell mode, where a second suction is applied to rupture the membrane and gain intracellular access. Whole cell mode is important for achieving the successful voltage clamp of a neuron. This technique allows you to measure the currents generated by ion channels at the soma and at synapses. It can also be used to measure the intrinsic excitability of a cell and much, much more. The last two configurations illustrated here 
the inside out and outside out patch allow for the investigation of intracellular and extracellular surfaces of ion channels. Paired with pharmacology, these techniques can yield great insight into ion channel function. Let's look at an example of the patch clamp in action. In our course, we will be seeing a lot of single channel currents when we study those of mechanically gated ion channels. In their quest to understand how ion channels worked, Nair and Sackman developed the patch clamp technique in 1976 to study the currents of acetylcholine receptors in the frog muscle. When they began their work, it was already known that these muscle fibers contained ligand-gated acetylcholine receptors. However, they had the idea to press a fire-polished pipette against the muscle fiber and apply suction, effectively entering into the cell-attached configuration. This allowed them to increase their signal-to-noise as well as capture single channels that they could activate by including acetylcholine in their internal solution. What they found next using voltage clamp was that aside from a stable baseline current, they also observed these flickers, downward deflections that were the result of an inward current occurring when a channel opened they were able to figure out that it was a single channel because there was an elementary current, meaning when the channel opened, it seemed to demonstrate the same degree of conductance each time, generating an average current of 2.7 picoamps. In a separate series of recordings, they found that these opening events could scale in the step size of their elementary current, demonstrating the opening of one, two, or three channels. The different configurations that we just discussed can be applied at different levels of investigation in combination with pharmacological, optogenetic, or chemogenetic approaches. It is because of this versatility and the nature of the measurement that patch clamp is considered to be the most direct and effective way to study the electrical signals of the brain.